Thank you, Kid Rock, for exposing me to the glories of methadone at an early age. Someone recently called me a pharmaphile, and I couldn't be happier. I'm Grant Harding. I'm a licensed pharmaphile in four states. And today we're going to be talking about my absolute favorite drug of all time, the glorious and illustrious methadone. Not to be confused in any way with methamphetamine that's different. Meth is a prefix that has to do with the structure of... Uh, Methyl group is just one carbon, doesn't have anything to do with methamphetamine at all. Methadone is a synthetic opioid, which means it binds to the opioid receptors. And because of this, it's great for pain. It's also good for a substance use disorder, but I see this more as a pain medication, and that's why I love it so much. You don't know how many times I personally have seen people struggle with insane amounts of pain, and then you switch them to methadone, and now they can live a somewhat normal life. Gosh, I get a little bit emotional when I talk about this. And I know you think I'm kidding, I'm not. People who have no quality of life whatsoever all of a sudden turn around and they can spend time with their families. They can maybe even go outside for once. Because it fully binds to the opioid receptor, I mean, there's things you gotta be cognizant of. Side effects like respiratory depression, which can be fatal. This basically means you pretty much forget to breathe. Constipation, which is no laughing matter, it actually is quite horrible sometimes. And of course, euphoria. I mean, we are messing with an opioid here. And yes, there is a potential for abuse, but that's kind of difficult for some folks to understand because it is used to help people who may have a disorder developed from using other substances. But I'll explain that in a minute. So methadone is similar to morphine in that it attaches to the opioid receptor and has everything that goes with that as far as side effects. But it's different because the structure is different. Take a look at morphine over here and take a look at methadone over here. Now that means two really important things to me as a pharmacist. One, somebody who's allergic to morphine more than likely won't be allergic to methadone. And you can't say the same thing between morphine and, for example, oxycodone. There is a possibility they could be allergic to both. And two, the structure of methadone allows it to do something more than what morphine does. Methadone actually antagonizes a receptor called the NMDA receptor. And this is incredibly important because there are different types of pain. I think a lot of people get confused with this. The two most relevant types of pain that we're going to talk about here today is nociceptive, which is what you thought of whenever I said pain. Like if you break your arm, that's going to hurt. That's nociceptive. That is something that can be treated very well with a traditional opioid like morphine or methadone. Then there's also neuropathic pain. Now this is kind of like pain due to the nervous system. This would be like a, a shooting, stinging pain, perhaps somewhere in your nerves. And because methadone antagonizes the NMDA receptor, it also helps with neuropathic pain. So it's a double whammy. Typically, I like to see one medication for one type of receptor or one type of action. But this is one of those rare instances where I love how methadone does both because both of these things are very tightly related, especially when we talk about cancer. Now, how often does a cancer patient have nociceptive and neuropathic pain? Quite often. This is how I think of methadone. It's morphine, which binds to the opioid receptors, and ketamine, which binds to the NMDA receptors, daughter. Methadone just sounds feminine to me. I don't know. Here's the good parts about methadone. It's best for cancer-related pain. And like I said, I've seen people, their whole lives were turned around once they started methadone. In fact, whenever I get a call from a doctor or a nurse or something and they're asking about, uh, you know, this person, they're, they're in 9 out of 10 pain and they can't take it anymore, what do we do? If I look at their chart and I see cancer on there, the very first thing I say is we're going to switch to methadone. It lasts a long time. So somebody with chronic pain, they don't really have a lot of energy and just taking a pill can be difficult. Methadone can be dosed anywhere between 1 and 3, and technically it could be more than 3 times a day, but you could dose methadone once a day depending on lots of different variables. Typically their body weight, how much adipose tissue they have. I've often heard this referred to as a methadone bucket. When somebody has a lot of adipose tissue, they only have to dose it once a day because this methadone bucket keeps supplying the methadone to their system. Because it lasts a long time, do not get this confused with half-life. When someone takes a medication, particularly through an IV formulation, your body doesn't just move it out all at once or in perfectly patterned processes. 
it's inverse logarithmic. So after an hour, let's say the half-life is an hour, if you have 100 milligrams of drug in your system, you'll have 50 after an hour. After another hour, it'll be 25. After another hour, it'll be 12.5, and so on and so forth. We typically say it takes about four or five half-lives for somebody to excrete a drug completely. But when we talk about methadone, particularly through the mouth, there's so many factors at play that you really can't even rely on half-life. The half-life of methadone, if you Google it, is somewhere between 8 and 60 hours, which is a completely irrelevant fact. That means nothing to anybody because it's too broad. There are lots of reasons for this. It has to do with body weight. It has to do with adipose tissue. It has to do with intervariability in hepatic metabolization, meaning your liver transforms methadone into something it can excrete, and that process can be different for everybody. The best part about methadone is that it is in my professional opinion, a long-acting opioid. Some people, even pharmacists, disagree with me there. I don't care. In what universe does dosing an opioid three times a day make it short-acting, but whatever. It's long-acting due to its metabolism, not some fancy mechanism, not some fancy coating on the tablet. And for this reason, the methadone tablets can be crushed, and it comes in a liquid. As far as I know, this is the only long-acting opioid that comes in a liquid. This is also why it's very popular for substance use disorder. A liquid is easier to take, you can verify that somebody swallowed it, and it's just convenient all around. A lot of people like to say that this is a conspiracy from Big Pharma because they want people to take methadone, especially for substance use disorder, so they get their money. Methadone is so cheap it's free. Each tablet is about 14 cents. <laughs> this is one of the cheapest drugs in existence. Now that's the wholesale price. If you go to a pharmacy and you use crush cost or something similar, it'll be about $10-ish for 30 tablets. Now, the bad parts about methadone, the stigma. A lot of times I see folks who do have chronic pain and they don't want to use methadone because it'll get me addicted. Also, there's tons of drug interactions, particularly with antidepressants. Now, somebody with substance use disorder wouldn't be depressed, would they? What about cancer? That's not a depressing thing to have. A lot of people are taking antidepressants and it does get difficult to manage this, so a lot of prescribers will just say, I don't want to deal with it. Certain medications will increase your methadone levels, certain other medications will decrease your methadone levels, and this is a pretty difficult drug to use to begin with, so it's really like throwing a dart at a moving target. Also, converting from other opioids to methadone becomes very tricky as well. I have never gotten a good answer for this. I've seen people hypothesize certain things, but as you increase your methadone dose, the analgesic effect is exponentially greater. So for example, 100 milligram of morphine is said to be about 33 milligram of methadone. This is a simplification. Trust me, it's even more complicated than this. About 1,000 milligram of morphine is about 66 milligram of methadone. So we 10x the morphine and only double the methadone. It's really crazy. It's really weird. There really is no actual answer for this. Because this is so difficult, a lot of the times whenever we start someone on methadone, the most important part is you simply just monitor them. We can get a pretty okay starting dose, but to move forward from that starting dose, you just have to see how they feel, if they're experiencing any sedation, how they rate their pain, and then take it from there. And you have to do this for about four or five days, or even longer, probably a week would actually even be better. Because when you take methadone, you'll feel the effects pretty quickly, about 30 minutes. But the full effect won't come for several days later. And because of this, it can be quite dangerous. Oh, I had my first dose of methadone the next day, my pain is still horrible, and providers will increase the methadone, maybe double it, and then a week later, things are just nuts. So to avoid that situation, you really do have to be quite conservative when selecting that first methadone dose. Like I said, this is a very challenging drug to use, but it is very rewarding. The low cost, the high reward, especially for folks with cancer-related pain, it makes it the best for pharmacists to intervene. We can use our clinical knowledge to help prescribers get the patients the pain relief they need and help mitigate that nervous feeling of, I don't know how this is really going to affect them. There is no maximum dose of methadone or any other opioid. The most I've ever seen was 500 milligrams of methadone per day. These only come in 5 and 10 milligram tablets. That is nuts. I imagine methadone to be a knight on a steed. 
galloping across the plains of pain, carrying only respite for those who are suffering. But I want to hear from you. Have you ever tried methadone, and what was your experience?